Okay, I'm going to do this video a little bit different to the videos that I normally do. I'm going to create tool chatter and then I'm going to solve the problem. And then we're going to try and debunk some of the stories that you hear about what causes chatter and what doesn't and all of that nonsense. So this is probably the worst condition you can have on a lathe. It is between centers. It is a dog clamp that is loose. I have a tool with massive overhang and I am bound to get pretty decent tool chatter. Now, I have been practicing because it is surprisingly difficult to get tool chatter if you actually want to get it, but let's see how this goes. All right, so the machine is going to scream at me, but oh yeah, that's horrible. She's unhappy. She is unhappy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's about all I can take for, for, for tool chatter because my lathe is getting hurt. All right, no. So, conventional wisdom says the flexibility of the lathe is the problem or the flexibility of your tool post is the problem. And if you ask anyone, they'll say, oh, your flexibility is wrong. Well, no, there's a little bit more to chatter than that. And this video is going to deal with just that. But before we get to that, let's actually sort out this problem right now. And I'm not going to take different takes because that would be cheating. All I'm doing is I'm using the other side of my tool, which is at a, as a different geometry. And I'm actually extending it further just to prove a point. So now you can see I haven't moved my cross slide. That tool is way further than it was before. All right, let's see now what happens. So remember, I haven't changed anything else. I haven't stopped the video camera. I haven't cheated in any way. All I'm doing is I've changed the tool geometry and I can do one more thing, but we're going to get to this a little bit later. So this is, this is anti-chatter wire. It's quite handy in certain, certain situations. So let's see what this does. All right, let's stick that on the tool. Stick that back. All right, so just to recap, I haven't changed anything else. I've put some anti-chatter wire on my tool. My tool distance is further than it was before, and everything is still like it was before. Now I'm actually going to go over part of this chatter, and we're going to sort it out, which is actually probably one of the more difficult things to do. So let's see if this works. So it's the same tool. And... Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> oh, there we go. Look at that. Ah, oh, I love my lathe. <laughs> All right. So what did I do differently? Let's have a look at that. But before we get there, I'm just going to have to deal with a little bit of maths and science. So we're going to science the crap out of chatter and then we're going to solve it and we're going to get the machines working properly and so that you guys don't need to deal with with well that okay so i have dug out my noise and vibration textbook i promise you guys a little bit of maths and it says over here, when external forces act in a multi-degree of freedom system, the system undergoes forced vibration. That's a lot of fancy words for saying, however you hold something, if you apply a force in a certain way, there is some other frequency that will excite it in that direction. For a system of n coordinates of degrees of freedom, the governing equations of motions are set at n coupled ordinary differential equations of second order. In other words, there's lots of equations because there's lots of different ways something can move. The solution of these equations become more complex when the degree of freedom of the system n is large and all the forcing functions are non-periodic. In other words, 
In an unstable system, the system can move whichever way it wants to, and each way that it can move has a natural frequency. Here's the most important. In such cases, a more convenient method known as modal analysis can be used to solve the problem. Ha! Huh. This is actually how engineers solve the problem of modal analysis. So let's take our little tool and let's break it down into fem little elements and we have a look at the modes. So I've taken the first four modes of natural frequency. Our tool can move in different ways and basically what the program does is it breaks up the tool into various sort of elements and then it works out the modal frequency and it's dependent on the degree of freedom. Now we are specifically interested in the direction of freedom that sort of matches our cutting forces. So we're looking at mode number two. Now that you, you can see that some of the modes have no bearing on how this tool will move. But mode number two is quite interesting because it's in the direction that the, the sort of tool cuts into the part. You notice that as the tool digs in, the further down it goes, the more the forces decrease and then it wants to spring back. And then you end up with a natural frequency in this direction. So everything from now on, we need to have a look at how we can get rid of this natural frequency. And there's a number of different ways of doing it. So now we've defined the problem, let's try and solve the problem. Okay, so all of that theory was all fine and good. And to be honest, it gave me flashbacks of looking at blank stairs in a lecture hall. But <laughs> it's, let's have a look at the practical use of all this theory. So this is the tool that I used right at the beginning of the video to get that beautiful chatter, or in fact, to sort out the beautiful chatter. So there's fundamentally two ways of sorting out tool chatter, and it's all got to do with shifting the natural frequency of the tool. Now there's a number of ways of doing this, and nine out of 10 people know about the stiffness, changing the stiffness. But essentially what you're doing is you're moving or you're shifting the mode or the natural frequency of the tool. So one of the best ways to do that is of course to shift the tool back and it's sort of good machining practice to have almost none of a overhang. In a case like this it does two things so if we think back of the theory that we've just had a look at the deflection at the end of the tool becomes a lot less so your natural frequency also shifts to one side and you're not going to get the tool running away and basically screaming and shouting at you, which is what we get when we get chatter. Another thing that you could do, which helps, in, which helps way more than anything else, is the cutting edge makes a massive difference. So in the beginning of the video, you saw I had a much wider cutting edge. And what that does is it forces the tool to deflect a little bit more and the chances of you sort of running into a natural frequency or chatter on your tool is exponentially increased with the amount of cutting forces or the cutting area that you have at the end of the tool. So the idea is if you have tool chatter and your tool isn't sticking out too far, then one of the first things I would have a look at is the actual edge of your cutting tool. And you don't want a large cutting surface. It is true that if you have a nice radius, you're going to get a very nice cutting surface. But you need to remember that a hobby lathe, you, you are limited with the, the sort of force that you can put at the end of the cutting tool. So it's worthwhile to have a slightly sharper cutting end at the end of your tool. Now, when I'm talking about tool sharpness, I'm actually not talking about the actual sharpness of the tool itself. I'm literally talking about the shape of the end of the tool. If you make that tool too round, you can, your forces are, are massive because your sort of drag area on your tool is, is much larger and you're going to end up with tool chatter. There is, of course, another way of sorting out chatter. Now, all of these ways that, that sort of are in conventional thought are typically used if, 
if you get tool chatter with reasonably moderate cuts and your tool tends to jump around all over the place. But the problem is changing the edge of that tool and setting it back is not going to help if you are doing incredibly small cuts. And there is another trick, and this is the trick that a lot of people don't know about. You can add dampening to the system. And that's and that right there is where you can get very fine cuts with a very small tool on a home workshop lathe and you can eliminate chatter. So changing the natural frequency of the tooling is perfect if you're doing medium to heavy cuts. If you get tool chatter, you just decrease your overhang and you just change the geometry at the end of the tool and your chatter should go away. But there is a point where you do very, very fine cuts and you end up with a half frequency chatter. That is very, very difficult to get rid of. And there's another trick in the bag of tricks when it comes to dealing with chatter. And that's to add dampening to the system. Now, this is one of those tricks that most home workshops don't sort of employ and they don't know about. And in fact, most model engineers don't know about this. And it's actually very, very easy to do. I do need to stress that this technique is only for light cuts. It is not a good technique to use if you do medium or rough cuts because it might dig in and you might end up with problems. And let me show you how this works. If you need to add dampening to the system, all that you do is you take a piece of copper, you flatten it, you heat it up red hot and you dunk it in some cold water and that will completely anneal the copper. What that does is it makes this copper very, very soft and it improves the dampening characteristics of the copper. If that goes underneath the tool like so, and you clamp your tool like you normally would, and obviously tighten it, what you've done is you've actually added dampening to the system. And dampening is a very effective way of getting rid of, completely getting rid of harmonic frequencies or natural frequencies in tooling. You'll notice in my example, right at the beginning of the video, I took what I called um, chatter removal um, <laughs> wire. And all that this is, is, is lead solder. And if you wind that at the end, you're actually changing the dampening of the tool. That works incredibly well with boring tools. If you take the same solder and you just wind it around the tool like this, you have completely changed the dampening of this tool. And if you're doing very light cuts on an internal bore, adding dampening like this at a high frequency level will get rid of that natural frequency and it should take away the problem. So just remember if you change um, the natural frequency, that's one way of getting rid of the problem. But if you add dampening to the system, that'll get rid of your higher frequencies, especially with your light cuts, and you'll get rid of tool chatter in, in that range. All right, let's circle back to the beginning of the video. And let's have a look at some of the stuff that I did to get rid of that chatter. The first thing I did was I flipped the tool around. So what we did was we got rid of that horrible cutting surface and we put a much sort of sharper cutting profile at the end. Now, just to be clear, when I'm talking about sharpness, I'm not talking about the sharpness of the tool because my tools are always sharp. It really is just the end profile. So I decreased the cutting surface, which decreased the forces, which improved the condition for creating chatter. In the beginning of the video, I didn't change the stiffness at all. So in, in fact, what I actually did was I increased the, the, the length or the overhang of the tool itself just to prove a point. But OK, that is one of the things that you could do if you had a prob uh, problem with the tool itself is to just decrease the, the overhang. One of the other things that I did do is I used anti-chatter wire, or that's what I called it, and that would have helped with the higher frequencies, but 
in that specific example, it probably didn't make that much difference, but it looked cool. And this definitely does work with very fine cuts at higher frequencies. So it really is worth considering. There is one other thing that I haven't mentioned up until now that actually did make a big difference. When I got the chatter, I had the machine on auto feed and I have found that nine out of 10 times, if I change from auto feed to manual feed, I can sort of gauge the amount of feed that I need for my tool to get rid of the chatter. Now, because you're a human being, you can, you can sort of process the, the feedback of the machine a lot quicker. You can actually get rid of the chatter yourself. So what I normally do is if I do get chatter, I increase my feed and that tends to get rid of the chatter. And then what I do is I dial back my feed. So in other words, I slow down my feed until the tool is happy again. And then I just carry on cutting. The more experienced I get with the lathe, I find the less I use the auto feed on the lathe and the more I rely on my hand feeds for both the main slide and the cross slide. And I have found that that's actually eliminated most of the chatter that I get. So that's something worth considering. And it is something that requires practice and there's no sort of fixed rule for it. So I'm just mentioning it, but again, just something that, that you should bear in mind. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and, and please give all of these ideas a try and see if it works for you on your lathe. And if you have other ideas on tool chatter, leave me a comment uh, so that the other guys can also learn all of these weird and wacky ideas.